Hey everyone, welcome back to Science in 10. So, when we're studying geology, it's helpful to start at the very beginning. Not the beginning like the first page of a textbook, but the beginning meaning the initial formation of the Earth. For that, we'll have to set the Wayback Machine all the way to just shy of 5 billion years ago, when our solar system was just beginning to form. Our solar system began as a nebula, a dense rotating cloud of interstellar gas and microscopic dust within the Milky Way galaxy, probably not much unlike the Eagle Nebula that we can observe today. As this nebula rotated, it began to flatten out into more of a disk-like shape. During this process, heavier elements like hydrogen and helium atoms were drawn towards the center of the nebula under the influence of gravity. With more and more mass accumulating in the center of the nebula, the growing gravitational force began to cause this central location to heat up. Ever increasing density further compressed and heated this region, right up until the point where it was hot enough for hydrogen atoms to start fusing into helium, sparking the initiation of a giant star-sized nuclear fusion reactor. Our sun. Now that the sun had formed, the period of gravitational contraction and heating of the nebula was waning, and the material left in the rotating disk began to cool. Heavier, metallic, and rocky dust was drawn inwards towards the sun and began to accrete into asteroids and planetesimals, otherwise known as microplanets. Millions and millions of asteroids and planetesimals. These planetesimals and asteroids were constantly colliding with each other, sometimes completely obliterating each other, other times accreting together to form larger planetesimals. Within a few million years, this period of planetary accretion created our four terrestrial rocky planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. But these early planets looked nothing like they do today. Wander around outside on Earth's surface right now, and it's a myriad of life, topography, and geology. Wander around on Earth's surface four and a half billion years ago, and you'd find a violent sea of molten rock that comprised the entire planet. This was a hostile place, under constant bombardment by asteroids and other planetesimals. One impact by a Mars-sized body, known as Thea, knocked out enough material to form our moon. All these constant impacts, plus the decay of radioactive elements within the early Earth, created enough heat to keep the planet in a near-molten stage. So what happened next? Obviously, right now we don't live on a giant ball of magma. Hey, Jacob. Huh? The floor is lava. Wait, what? The floor is lava. Oh, Our early Earth, though it may have been completely molten, its composition was not evenly distributed throughout its interior. Heavier elements such as iron and nickel began to sink towards the center of the planet in a process called density stratification, or planetary differentiation. To illustrate this process, imagine a clear cylinder filled with cooking oil, water, and a bunch of little bits of insulation foam. Shake up the cylinder to give the contents a good mix. Wait a little bit, and the different materials will settle out according to their densities, with the denser material on the bottom, and the least dense floating towards the top. This same process took place during Earth's early history. Dense materials sank towards the center, and the lighter elements floated towards the surface. And during this planetary differentiation, or density stratification, the early Earth was also cooling. The lighter elements that floated towards the surface slowly solidified into the crust. This new, solid crust formed a great thermal barrier between Earth's internal heat and the cold vacuum of space. This canned heat, if you will, is one of the drivers behind plate tectonics, the great unifying concept that explains much of modern geology, and helps to explain the rest of our planet's evolution right up through today. But that's a topic for another video, so until then, 